We have a huge update to Hue Forge. You see what I did there? Because Huge Forge is out. I'm so excited to dive into everything that this update has to offer. Flat Forge is now here, and Huge Forge is now here. Now, Huge Forge is free. If you go to the website, there are plenty of instructions on how to actually install the plugin. It's pretty simple. If you want a whole video on how to do that, let me know down in the comments below. The other one is Flatforge. And now transparently, Flatforge is the one that interests me less only because it's going to take much more time to print. You have to have an AMS and you are going to produce a ton of poop. And we produce enough poop as it is. So I'm trying to keep my 3D printers pooping as minimal as possible. And so today in this video, we are going to be diving into Huge Forge and I'm going to be giving you everything that you need to know to get your first Huge Forge print off the slicer, on the printer, and in your hands. But don't worry, Flat Forge videos are coming soon. Calm down, I already hear you, I hear you. They're coming, let's dive in. All right, so we are inside of Hue Forge. Now, there are a couple of things that you will need to keep in mind as you're looking to create a Huge Forge because they're not super self-explanatory, but once you get the hang of it, it will be pretty simple. So you see this image of Ahsoka Tano that I have loaded in to Hue Forge right here. The biggest thing that I want to make sure is that I have an even photo. So the photo that I'm dragging in is the correct size, really the correct ratio. The ratio is very, very important. So this ratio is one to three, which means that if you were taking measurements, it would be 50 millimeters by 150 millimeters. This is actually one of my bookmarks that I have available on my Maker World completely for free. You can check it out, link in the bio or link in the description, not the bio. And the ratio for this bookmark is one to three. That means that when it scales up from 50 and 150 all the way up to 200 to 600, it will follow the same scale and it won't be crunched or we won't be locked into a weird aspect ratio. This means that it will fit into things like frames that are built for 200 by 200 prints very, very easily. So you wanna make sure that you are dragging in an image that is the correct size. You can double check your size right down here. You can see that I have an image that is 150 by 50.03. That 0 0.03 is totally okay. We see if we edit this, our width changes as well. And that means that we have a one by three or three by one image loaded in. And so this is our Ahsoka Tano. Now we can play around with the sliders here and get an image that we like. Something like that. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty good. Now, typically what you would do when you would export a file is you'd click file, you'd scroll down to save project as, and you would save the project that way. But this is going to be a little bit different. Instead of doing that, when you install a plugin, you're going to see your huge forge kind of print or your you know button right there. You're going to click that and it's going to bring up this menu. Now, I'm going to make this menu bigger so that we can read everything that we have here. And we have several different things going on here. Right now, we see this grid here on the right. We see all of these different instructions and settings and things that are a little overwhelming here on the left. It looks overwhelming. I played around it with it for like two seconds. It's not that overwhelming. You just need to take a deep breath. We got this, okay? So when we look over here, the biggest thing that we want to look at is this pieces. Right now, it's throwing out pieces that are four by two with, with a size of 100.47 by 150.62. So that's why we have two of these columns here on our print. And we don't want that. We basically want to get rid of this middle line. And we just want three plates down the middle, a 200 by 200, a 200 by 200, a 200 by 200. Now, my feedback to the Hue Forge team is to make this default because this is probably going to be the setting that most people are going to use. And so it should, by default, break them up by 200 by 200. I submit that feedback. Don't worry, I got you guys. Um, but we can also edit what's going on up here as well. And so we have the overall output size and it's just over 200 millimeters and it's just over 600 millimeters, which is why we're getting these extra panels because it's technically not a 200 by 200 image because this is just over by basically a millimeter. So we want to bring this down to where both are just under 
that 200 by 600. Does that make sense? So now we have this 199.94 and 599.48. And if we want to get even more exact, we can just type in 600 and we see we come up here to 200. So let's just type in 200. And this is probably going to be the closest that we can get 200 by 599.66. And you can see that that instantly changes our grid over here on the right to be three panels just like this. So now we're going to get three, basically 200 by 200 panels that we can print out and look at on our on our 3d printer so we have this correct now there are a bunch of other kind of settings here that we're not going to go into today we'll go more in depth into settings later um, you can also click manual split which is really cool you can actually drag like around and select where you want to make the split again i wish you had the millimeter the height um kind of here on the right so you see exactly where you're making your splits but we can dive deeper into manual splits later because right now we have our prints. It's three panels down the side. All we need to do is name it Ahsoka and then click OK. Now we're going to see, I'm going to name this something a little different because I've actually already done this with this image and it's on the printer right now. I'm going to do Ahsoka one because when we hit OK, we're going to see a couple different things happen. But before we do that, there are some new settings inside of the export settings that would at least be good for us to go over, even though we're not going to dive deep into them. So this split by color is actually a feature that I requested. I don't know if he added it because of me, but I definitely requested it. And we'll talk more about how this could be helpful in a future video, but essentially it will mean that you don't actually have to differentiate the, the slicer to change the filaments on the right. You can actually just change the individual part, that color and the slicer will do it automatically. It's super cool. I can't wait to play around with this more, but just know the slicing time is going to increase by a lot. And so make sure you have a computer that can slice your files relatively efficiently if you wanna play around with split by colors. I'll do a whole video on that later. We have removed background, which is super cool. Um, I. I don't know how good it is. Even they're like, currently it's not optimized. So I'm excited to see how this gets better in the months and years to come. And then flatten, this is flat forge basically. Um, and this will create your face down kind of settings. And it, clearly um, it will not let you split by color or remove the background when you have these settings turned on, but we're not gonna do that today either. All right, so then we're gonna hit okay. And you're gonna see it's going to generate are three different panels here. All right, so we have our three different panels. They've been generated. Let's go ahead, let's go over to the slicer and let's take a look at what we generated. I'm gonna show you guys what the file structure looks like in your file explorer because it's a little bit different. We have a couple different things loaded into uh, this folder that we saved inside of. We have our image tiles, which is a setting that you can configure. And I love this. This will actually give you the exported images of what it created, which I love this feature now. It's so helpful, especially for creators that are creating renders and things like that of their images. I love that. You have your folder that has your STLs and they're named row one, column one, row two, column two, row three, column whatever. So depending on how big your Hue Forge is, you'll have the, you know, where it goes. So if you have a picture that has lots of white or lots of black or lots of one color and one panel is all white with a little splash of something, you'll be able to differentiate it inside the slicer based off the, the name, which I really appreciate. We have our Ahsoka final. This is actually what I saved. This is the dot three MF that will get uploaded to Patreon, the huge forge version later. So if you want to be able to download and print this file without having to worry about Hue forge at all, check out my Patreon. The links are down there in the description. We have our Hue forge project, which is the same. We have our PNG, which is just the original image and its entirety. We have our dot text document, which will um, talk about all of the all of the kind of details here. So we have some new stuff. The, the tiled printing instructions um, gives you a little bit more information. So it says each tile is its own STL, which is the correct row and column in the name. It's what we just talked about. The grid layout.png, which we'll look at in a second, actually shows you the kind of blown up picture with the lines on it to show you where the grids are. Um, being marked. It's important to note that in tiled image sometimes will not have all the same color swaps and this is normal. It might be possible to skip 
lower swaps if they will never be seen at this height range modifier to print lower portions faster. We're not going to dive in too much to what they're talking about here. Essentially, there are some workarounds to where if you're printing an image that has a lot of purple and blue and green in the middle tile, but pretty much only has green on the top tile, you don't need to print the purple and the other colors on that tile. We can talk more about that in a future video. If you want to see that, let me know down in the comments below and we'll do a full deep dive on what that can look like. That video is coming first to my Patreon members over there. And then um, height range modifiers, we will talk more about this as well. I'm excited to play around more so with height range modifiers. You're just printing more solid colors much faster, which will reduce the amount of print time, making you more money if you're printing these to sell at markets. Very, very, very cool. And then we have our grid layout, which is what they were talking about here. And you can see, so we have row one, column one, 200 by 200, row two, column one, 200 by 200, and then row three, column one, 200 by 199.7. And so these are our grids here, and you can see the lines that kind of mark where they're at. So I have everything loaded up into the sli slicer. We have Hasoka, not Ahsoka. That's, uh, I misspelled that, Ahsoka. This is the head tile, then we have the body tile, and then we have the body two tile, which is just that second one. And I have all of my settings already preloaded in here. 0 0.08 layer height, 0 0.16 initial layer height, 100% infill, turn that purge tower off. And we are going to go ahead. I've actually already sliced it. So we're going to take a look here at the preview of this first image. Now you will see, and I'm actually going to drag this over so you can see the color swaps. I've gone ahead and added the color swaps here on the right. And they are going to be the same for this image for every single print. So we'll have black, gray, white, orange for all three of the prints. And you can see this print's only going to take three hours, 50 minutes. That's pretty good. Like that is a really, really good print time for a poster that ranges between, I'd say, five and seven hours on average. And so this print only taking about four hours is a really good, really good print. And then we have the body section here which is going to take three hours and nine minutes. And then we have the body second part here, which is going to take three hours and 40 minutes. Now, all you have to do is throw these on your printer and print them out. And so I am going to post a picture of what the finished print looks like over on my Instagram. And so if you want to check out what this Ahsoka poster looks like when it's all said and done, make sure to follow me on Instagram. It'll also be posted in my Discord. All the links that you need to be able to follow everything we're doing here at 3D Prints by Vic will be in the description below. So make sure to check all those things out. I know you might have a lot more questions about Huge Forge, and that is awesome. I want you to ask them. Let me know what they are down in the comments below. This was just a super quick overview of what it is capable of and how you can easily get something cool on your printer in under 15 minutes. If you enjoy videos like this, make sure to leave a thumbs up. I sincerely appreciate it. It means the world to me. It helps me do what I do, and y'all, we are so close to getting monetized here on YouTube. So thank you to everyone who has watched a video, who has subscribed who has liked i literally can't do it without you guys so thank you and a huge thank you to all of my patreon members there's over 60 of you now thank you guys so much you let me do what i love to do and I, I really do appreciate each and every one of y'all if you want to check out everything i'll have it linked down there in the comments and description area below if you want to learn how to use Hue Forge yourself, schedule some one-on-one -on -one coaching time with me. I have the Hue Forge Pro tier on my Patreon. There are only two spots left. So check it out before they run out. You will get the opportunity to learn Hue Forge at a much easier pace, much better guides, and hopefully they will set you up for success to learn Hue Forge quickly. Guys, thank you so much for every single one of y'all, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. That was a really long outro. I gotta, I gotta work on that. Bye.